Okay, well, hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter seven is charge accounts validation. All right, so create a class with a method that accepts a charge account number and its argument. Sorry, as its argument. The method should determine whether the number is valid by comparing it to the following list of valid charge account numbers. So these are the valid charge account numbers. We are going to store, end up storing it in an, in an array. These numbers should be stored in an array or an array list object. So we'll choose which one, which is probably going to be an array. Use a sequen sequential search to locate the number, the number passed as an argument. If the number is in the array, the method should return true, indicating the number is valid. If the number is not in the array, the method should return false, indicating the number is invalid. Write a program that tests the class by asking the user to enter a charge account number. The program should display a message indicating whether the number is valid or invalid. Okay, and so uh, when I read this question, I wasn't sure if Tony Gaddis, the author, wanted wanted us to create a separate class and write a, a, a separate program to test the class, or I don't know if he wanted us to use just our a class that has a main method to, you know, create a method in there. Uh, but you know, I, I wasn't sure, and so let's just. Because the, the question is, create a class with a method. You know, so let's just go ahead and create a regular, cl a separate class, and then create a program that tests the class. All right. And so we're going to have two files. One is going to have the class, and one is going to have the program that's going to test the class. And so let's have this page. Let's create. Let's let this page have the class itself. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and create a public class. Okay. We want the class to be public. And sorry. Uh, and I need to give it a name. Right. And and so I'm going to call this charge account. I'm going to call this class charge account. And um, now I'm going to define the field for this class. And the field is just going to be an array that's going to store these numbers. Okay, it's going to be a private field, private because I don't want, I'm hiding this field from code outside of this class. Any code outside of this class, I'm, I'm hiding this field from it. Um, I don't want any code outside of this class. When I say, when I, well, any code that is different from this, okay, outside of this class, that tries to access this field, this array that I'm about to create, or tries to change its content, uh, shouldn't be able to. I'm hiding it. That's why I'm, keep, I'm making it private. They should be able to use other means, other public methods, which I'm, I will define later on. Um, well, in this case, we are going to define. But when you're creating a class, they should use other means, other public methods, you know, to be able to access the field, right? But then not directly, not directly change it or, or see the content of it. And so, so it's going to be a private field, right? It's going to be a, an integer array, right? Because these numbers are integers. So private int integer array, int array. And I'm going to call it, over here it says, the following list of valid charge account numbers. So I'm going to call this charge account numbers. And we can go ahead and initialize them. We can. We can go ahead and, and, and initialize them, or we can wait uh, and, and initialize them in the constructor. When someone tries to create an object from this class, we can use a constructor to initialize them, or we can just go ahead and, and, and initialize it here. And if you want to initialize an array, you don't have to use a new keyword. You can just use two curly braces over here if you know what you're going to put in the array. So we know these numbers are going to go in the array. So I'm just going to make a copy of this num this whole set, paste it. The only thing is they have to be separated with commas. These numbers have to be separated individually with commas. And so that's exactly what, what I'm going to do here. So there are a lot, but it will take me not too long. And so if I type in a comma here, I can break it to the next line and then continue. Option. Okay, good. Okay, so now we're done. We have the field set up. When I compile this, well, I need to save it first, right? Uh, I'll save it. I'll save it later on. Okay, so I have the private field charge account numbers. Let's indent this properly. That's good. All right. Let's see what the question says. Um, it said. 
the method um, so it's a create a class with a method that accepts a charge account number as its argument so we know we're going to create a method in the class it says the method should determine whether the number is valid by comparing it to the following list of valid charge account numbers the class okay is going to have a method that accepts a charge account number so in other words we have to create a method in this class okay that's going to accept an argument and that argument is going to be a number and once it it accepts that argument right it's going to take that number check in this array to see if any of the numbers in this array matches that number that matches the number that was passed into the method as an argument and if it does then the method should return true if it does not then the method should if it does if the number is not in the array then the method should return false in other words we're going to create an array sorry create a method that's going to return a boolean value either true or false and so we are going to create a regular method, right? And this method is going to be an instance method. An instance method, okay, is basically any method that is going to directly work with any of the fields of an object created from this class, okay? Because this method we are about to create is going to work with this field here, this charge account numbers field here, because it's going to directly directly work with work with it. This method is an instance method, and instance methods don't have the keyword static. For now, just know that instance methods don't have the keyword static. In, when we get to chapter 8, you'll get to know more about that. But for now, just know that instance, me, instance methods don't have the keyword static. And so, but, but apart from that, they have a return type, everything, they look just like a regular method. And so I'm going to create a public method because this method is a method I want code outside of this class to, to be able to access direct, directly. And so it's going to be a public method, no keyword static, all right, no static keyword. I need to set the return type. Now over here, the, the question said, said that if the number is not in the array, the method should return false, indicating the number is invalid. And if the number over here is in the array, then the method should return true, indicating the number is, is valid. And so it's either returning true or false. And we know that if it's returning true or false, true or false, the values true or false are basically Boolean values, right, Boolean. And so this method is going to return a Boolean value. And so public no keyword static, but we set a return, return type to boolean, and we, we give it a name, right? This method is going to, over here, it says write a critical class with a method that accepts a charge account number as its argument. The method should determine whether the number is valid by comparing it to the following. Okay, so basically this method is checking to see if the number passes an argument is valid. And so we can give it a name like check, right, if valid. Or you can just basically call it is valid it depends on you know what your preference a any name that makes sense to you i'm going to use check if but, but we can even make it a long game i can say check or, or basically we i can i can use a name like check um check if uh, ch it, it, you can you can call it anything right i just want it to be clear right and then so you, so you can actually come up with a shorter name if you want later on so i'll use something like um check for presence check number for presence right it's going to be a regular method and so check number for presence is basically going to accept in an argument it's going to accept in a number Okay, it's going to accept in a number, it's going to check in this array to see if that number is present. And so I need to define a parameter for that argument that's going to be passed in. And, that, and it's going to be an integer number, right, because these numbers in the array, uh, they, are, they are all integers. And so I'm going to define an integer parameter and say int number given. A number is going to be given to this uh, um, method when, when called. And so check number for present. What number? Um, it, the number is going to be given here. And so once we have the number, we want to create a loop that's going to go, first of all, go through each element in this array. And so let's use a for loop for that. We're going to use sequ sequential search. And that's what the question said. Sequential search is basically going to search each element, right? Go through each element of the array, start from here, take this number, compare it with the number that's given. If they match, that means the number is, you know, has been found. So return true. That means the number is there. 
If not, then check the next one. If not, check the next one. Keep on checking the next one. And if you don't find the number, return false. If you find the number at any point whilst you're checking, then return true. That's uh, that's basically a sequential uh, search. All right. And so the way we go through the array is we know that each element in the array is is marked by an index, right? The first element in the array has an index of zero, not one, zero. And so if there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 numbers in this array, right? The very first, there are 18 numbers. The very first number has an index of 0, right? The last number has an index of 17 because we are, start, we are, we are, counting, we are, starting, we are starting to count from 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There are 18 elements in the array, right? But then the, in, the indices, right, start counting from 0. This is element 1, right? But its index is 0. And this is element 18, but its, its index is 17. So the last index of an array, okay, Sorry the, sorry, the last index of, or basically the index of the last element in the array, the index of the last element in the array is always going to be one less than the length of the array, okay? The length of the array is 18, and, it's, and we know that the index of the last element is always going to be one less because we are starting to count from zero. And so let's create a variable called index to represent these, you know, th th this number, this index. And we are going to use that index to refer to the array elements. And so let's set index, it's going to be an integer, right? An integer. Because it's either going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, all right. So int index, for int index is equal to 0. We said we are starting from 0 because the in index starts from 0. And we are saying that as long as the index is less than the length of this, um, array as long as it's less than the length of this array and the way we access the length of this array is each array has a public okay each array okay so each array has a public field called length it's not a, me a method it's a public field called length and that length field contains or st stores the length of the array and so the way to access it access it is by using the object itself which is the array itself right so charge account numbers dot length with no parentheses because it's just a field it's not a method it's a field it's a public field and that's why we don't have to use other means to access it we're accessing it directly and saying charge account numbers dot length 